We're still waiting on Sean, but I think we can go ahead and get started. Uh, we're already after 10 o'clock and don't want to keep the attendees waiting too long. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here today. Uh, I am Mike Begg, the CEO of AMZ Advisors. Uh, we take brands from one to 10 million uh, per year in sales on the Amazon platform, and we have been doing that since 2015. Way too many Q4s, way too many mistakes we've seen. And that is exactly why we've organized this webinar for all of you to get a better idea of what you need to do to be successful on uh, Q on Amazon this Q4. Uh, we have a few different speakers with us today. We have John Tilly from Zonguru, uh, Ramiro Velasco from GoAvance, Don Henning from Akrumi, uh, Sean Hart should be joining shortly from Post Purchase Pro, and fi finally, uh, Barack uh, Yulga from Forsket. We're going to be talking about everything from how to maximize your Amazon listings, how to advertise your products during Q4, uh, how to finance your inventory, uh, create great customer experiences, and finally deal with the last mile fulfillment challenges of shipping in Q4. That being said, uh, we're going to start off uh, with John Tilly talking about maximize li maximizing listing optimization for Q4. Uh, I'm going to try to do as little talking as possible to allow these guys to share as much of their knowledge as they can. And at the end, we'll try to have a Q&A session for anyone that has any questions. So, John, feel free to take it away. What's up? Oh, I'm first. Okay, that's good. Uh, yeah. Um, Cool. Let's let's jump in. Um, again, you guys manage the questions. Uh, let, let's keep it organic. And um, how much time do I have, Mike? Is is it like 10, 10, 15 minutes, something like that? Yeah, take uh, 10 to 15 minutes should be good. All right, cool. Um, okay, let me share my screen. Uh, that's the city of London. You don't want to see that, right? <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, here we go. Uh, all right, so um, yeah, I've got, a, I've got a couple of slides. We'll walk through that, and then uh, I'm going to show you our, our listing optimization tool for a couple of minutes towards the end. Um, but let's just talk about a little bit of the strategy around um, maximizing your your Q4 uh, potential, right? So through SEO, and I think um, just to talk about Zongu for a second, um, you know, we have over 18 different tools. We help obviously agencies and brands scale on Amazon. Uh, we have tools around product research search optimization, uh, alerts, financials, reviews, and, you know, kind of our industry leading tools. I think what we're best known for is our keyword intelligence and, and SEO tool. We were the first to integrate with ChatGBT back in January of this year. So we have a lot of data there. We, we see what's working. Um, and that's what we're going to focus on today, which is around the idea of, of, you know, SEO optimization going into Q4. So there's a couple of things on this slide. I think, you know, we, we're going to talk high level about the, the algorithm, right? And, and, and you know, what, what's the latest and greatest? I think the first key point here is like, you know, we've been around in the space since, you know, 2016 or, or before. We have a lot of sellers on the team. We have a lot of relationships with, with uh, Amazon. We have a lot of relationships with ex-Amazon people. You know, they, they, they go through, through many of, of those people. A lot of people who've built um you know the the algorithm the, the the property level pages so we we understand what works with the algorithm we have the data um at a high level it's still it, it's not rocket science right I, and and we're going to get into some of the latest thoughts around this as well but i can guarantee you or i can tell you now with with confidence it's not rocket science from our perspective as sellers what can we do the best of and and the first point i would say here is look at the things that we can really control one is obviously the listing and and what i would say at a high level there is to broad match um specifically for the most relevant terms with high search volume as high up in your listing as you can you can exact match for, for some of your your key phrases but you can do a lot with broad match and that works really well with the algorithm and most importantly it means that you don't over, overstuff your listing with a whole bunch of different exact match terms right so that would be the biggest learning i'll give you there is is build a listing but but broad match as much as you can you'll be surprised how much you can broad match just in your title for, for your main terms it's, it's a lot um Obviously, you know, consistent organic sales, that's great. You can drive that by search volume. Uh, your price is, is critical in that, in that theory as well. Um, off Amazon traffic, if you have some of those strategies, especially in Q4, definitely use them. Keyword relevance, again, you know, it's, it's about continuously looking for the most relevant keywords that are current right now, right? So I think that's one of the things that we do really well, well in our tools is we look for current localized terms for that specific market that customers are actually typing into Amazon. If you can find those, those are the, those are the, the, the key ones, right? The relevant ones 
that that means seasonality, not just what you think it's going to be, but what it actually is. So there's a there's some updating that you should look at doing as you move into into the the, the quarter uh, Q4. Um, click through rate, main image, of course. Conversion rates, yeah, uh, for sure, including your PPC, which is which is critical, and we'll talk a little bit more about that now. And I'm, I know some of the guys and uh, talking about PPC coming up, we'll we'll talk a lot about that. Uh, seller authority. So there's a whole bunch of things. I think the, the other point I would make here is there's a lot of conversations around this idea of of uh, the A9 and and uh, Bert, right? Um, if you guys are following in, in the industry and some kind of thought leaders in the space, um, the whole idea there is like they're saying like, hey, is is the, the A9 algorithm moving away from lexical matching, which is like, hey, what do you have in your listing? And they use that to drive, um, you know, your 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 indexing and your and your ranking and, and everything else. Or is it more semantic, which is like the algorithm is going to predict and say, hey, based on your category and, you know, what you're kind of selling, we'll figure out the keywords um, and and th those are the ones that you're going to index for. Um, there's truth in that in the last part of the semantic side. But what I would say there is there's nothing new. Amazon has been doing that for, for forever. You can you can type into listings and you can type a specific term that you that you may not even have in your listing and you'll still index for that and they'll still rank you for it. Right. So there is a degree of semantic um you know uh inferences that, that that amazon has been doing all the time um and you know the point there is that it doesn't change what you should be doing your listing which is which is index you know broad matching you know including the most relevant terms but you you agree you're setting the platform to guide the the algorithm right and so that's that's the key thing i think a seller's take away is like do your best job of writing the best most professional listing that's that can index for the most keywords and that's the guide that um that will drive uh your your um the algorithm for ranking and of course uh ppc plays a lot a lot in that but you know everyone else is going to be talking about that too um okay so that's what i want to say on that from from your guys perspective as sellers we have this phrase called tech contextual seo it's the way that we think about seo and it's the way that we built our tools which is obviously to maximize your optimization which is reach and volume for the Amazon algorithm, right, which is around how do you guide the algorithm to to um, you know index for the right keywords, and you know importantly staying staying on top of Amazon's business objectives, right, because at the end of the day, uh, whatever their business objective is, is, is if you can align your SEO strategy with what they're trying to do, which is like hey maybe they prefer outside traffic right now, or hey um, you know what, what, whatever those goals are, right, to get new products listed or whatever, follow that closely and and guide that decision. Uh, humans, you know, conversion rates, images, ratings, all those kind of things that that are critical um, for conversion. What I what I would say on the human side, and and especially with with AI and and everything that's coming into the space, how you can optimize listings is starting to rise all the boats, right? And so, what that what that means is, as a seller, the more you can connect with the human side of things, which is your customer, the more research you can put into your customer, what drives them emotionally. Um, you know, what, what, what matters to them most, you know, um, how do I connect better with, with that customer? That's where you're going to make the biggest difference. And I can guarantee you right now, we can walk through a product listing and, and there's going to be 15 things that you can do better from a human perspective that, that you're not doing right now. So as you save more time on, on, on some of the AI stuff and, and writing listings, that time that you saved, put it into researching and connecting better with your customers. The more you can do that, the better you're going to do for sure. Um, and that applies to the, the, the buying experience. If you can, if you can map that buying experience out, you're going to get a lot of insights. And the last one is also something that a lot of sellers don't pay enough attention on, which is how do you stand out versus your com competition, not only from your product and your listing, but what keywords are they focusing on? Are they focusing on the right keywords or what keywords are they missing that you can attack? And the more that you can understand how, you know, where are they ranking, but where are the opportunities where there's some relevant strong keywords that you haven't ranked for, um, you know, that's going to be really important for you, you guys to focus on. Um, uh, just uh, Mike, but watch my time and just tell me when I've got like four minutes or five minutes left or whatever. So I, I just, I just manage it. Um, and wow. then uh, the, the point I wanted to say here on this last point is what is your job uh, on the keyword side, especially on your, on your listing, which is covering those top three things. But the most important thing is to guide that algorithm. I, I kind of mentioned that a little bit earlier. Um, so, so you know, put in whatever you can to make sure that you guide it and that you update it. Once you have your baseline, what we're seeing the best results on is going back and finding keywords, whether it's from your search term report or, you know, from 
our keywords on fire tool or whatever it is, finding keywords that you haven't got yet in your listing, then you can add those, especially as you get into the, the, the seasonal part of it. I want to talk a little bit about our ChatGBT tool. Uh, we were the first, again, to integrate with ChatGBT back in January uh, in, in our space, and we were one of the first to connect with, with uh, ChatGBT API. Uh, we're on our version four right now. Uh, there's a lot more customization. I'll show you this in a second. Um, but some of the results that we're getting from this is, is getting better category rank. Um, you know, obviously, as I said, whether you're a seller or an agency, you, you, you spend less time, you know, uh, you know, developing, uh, your listings. And so you have more time to put into high quality output. Uh, on average right now, we're tracking listings across our agencies and, and, and our, and our client brands. It's a 23% list, uh, in, increase in revenue on existing listings. So we took new listings out. It's just on existing listings, which is significant, right? Um, 37% improvement on bestseller listings in under one minute. So it's about a 37% better optimization score than the bestsellers on page one, which is, which is pretty cool, right? That we're getting with it, with, with the, with the, um, the, the AI. So, um, you know, these are some of the things we achieved. Why, why does it perform? I, you know, it's really based on the baseline of, of the kind of keyword intelligence we get and that we know how to tell ChatGPT to write a listing that really matches the algorithm. That's that's the, the major science that, that we have uh, in the tool. These are the kind of things that you can do to prompt it. You can put in a product description. You can negative match on keywords. You can choose a mood. You can choose language. And this kind of piece at the bottom here, you can actually power prompt the AI. So that's a really cool feature that we released recently, which is once you write an AI listing, if you want to, and you have a product description and you want to kind of re-prompt it, you can just say, hey, you know, I rewrite it, but I want you to focus on these benefits. So it gives you a lot more flexibility to focus on key sections and, and get the, the AI to write that. Um, so I'm just going to jump in and just show you, because, uh, you know, and again, you, you guys can look at this inside of the tool. You can, um, you know, you can try and write your own scripts. Obviously, we write all of that stuff and we base it on the keywords that we get. Um, this is on Guru. I've just logged into our demo account. I'm going to show you uh, this tool right here, the listing optimization tool. Uh, there'll be a lot on the screen, but I want to just explain it to you. And, and then I'll, if I have a minute, I'll, I'll probably just run an AI just, just straight up and, and show you guys what it does. Um, you got about three minutes left, John. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's it. Um, we just got a demo, and then and then uh, that, that's that's high level. So, what this what the way we built this this tool? Remember what I told you guys? It's about contextual SEO, right? So, what we're trying to do for you is we're trying to show you, hey, what are the best keywords that you should optimize your listing for? And then you know when you write your listing, how well do you optimize? But we give you the options to add your top competitors and to see how well they optimized. Where are they strong? Where are they weak? What are they focusing on? How do you beat them, right? So it gives you the context of your competitors, which therein lies that stat that I gave you, which is typically the AI is about 37% better optimized than the best listings on page one. That's just the standard of what we see. So, you know, on the on the left side, we have keywords that are imported from our keyword tool. We have a, a relevancy score, search volume, historical search volume, and then how those keywords are being used in the listings that I've loaded. So that's the the, the, the data on the left side. And on the right-hand side, you can, uh, and this is for golf travel bag, excuse me. So the product I've lo loaded here in the US is golf travel bag. What I've just done, and you don't have to do this, but I always recommend it is load at least the top two competitors on page one for the keyword golf travel bag USA. I've probably loaded the best from brand analytics or, you know, we have it in our Chrome extension. You can see which are the top converting ones. So I've loaded those. Uh, and then you can load your own listing. Uh, you can do an AI draft from scratch. You can you can do a whole bunch of things. So, you know, depending on what um, you'd like to do, you can just load your listing or you can load your competitors. And as soon as you load the competitors, uh, you just click on this, right, to load them. And you can you can search right here. Search, you'll get the top organic listings. You can select a few of those. You can add ASINs if you want. You can add a blank listing. You set it up, right, which I've done right here. Uh, and as soon as you do that, it pulls in all the content. So you can see for this, this is one of the top sellers. You can see uh, the optimization score, how well they optimize. The red line is the average for page one. So they haven't done a good job on some of these pieces. Um, you can see their listing strength score as well. You can click on that. Um, and then you see all the content. So all the SEO content that matters is pulled in. So it's title, bullets, description, backend search terms, which is pretty unique to our product. So we pull in all of this content. And then it shows you, hey, how, how you know, with the main keywords here, how have you exact broad match? This is exact match. This is somewhere in the listing. Uh, this broad match, which is the open star over here. So you, you can see right here, there's a lot that this listing can do, right? And these are the, the dedupe keywords that are missing, the dark green ones. There's a lot this listing can do to improve. We also give some improvement areas here. You can go and add to the listing. 
and you can rewrite listings from scratch here as well to get a better score. So you can see his score here. You can see this is another competitor. I ran an exa example AI draft right here. Um, I can just do one straight up. If we have a minute, I'll just, just run one for you. If you, anyone's interested, I'll just do it. AI generates. You can put in, it's it's important to put in all of these, um, you know, descriptions and, and tell it what to do. But for right, for right now, we're not going to do, I'm just going to run it as is. So I'll just generate and it'll take a minute. And you can see right now, it's generating the listing uh, with AI and, uh, you know, we give you some kind of cool hints. Uh, so, you know, as you wait, uh, you can always read a couple of these um, tips if you want. Um, you can also open a new browser and run another session. So, you know, if you don't want to wait, you, you don't have to, but it'll take a minute. It'll run it. Um, let's see how it scores in comparison. Uh, and, you know, again, what we're doing is basing on the, we're basing it on the keywords that we have and we're telling it how to write the listing exact broad, Etc. cetera, uh, match. And so this score is actually even better than the last one I ran. It's 47,000. Uh, you can see how well it's scored. Um, for whatever reason, it's overrun. I haven't seen that before, but we've overrun the character count. But again, you can just remove this, right? So, um, you know, if you want to remove it, you can. Um, and then, you know, it writes the listing in the right way. So you'll see it's not overstaffed. We'll write the, the benefits first, followed by a description, uh, you know, the full description, the back in search terms. You can go and you can, you know, you can go and write in this listing, you can update it, you can import from competitors, you can rerun the AI. And then whenever you're happy with the final score, you can go ahead and publish it directly to Amazon through our, our platform. So that's it at a high level of, of, of how, how it works. Um, I hope that's helpful. Uh, you know, again, um, hopefully some of that strategies up front is important. I would say one of the biggest opportunities is when you are refreshing listings is to make sure you align that with your PPC strategy what keywords you're focusing on, drive some ACOS, uh, you know, get better conversion rates. That, that's really uh, helpful um, to drive your business. And then the final thing here is just if you do, if you don't use on Guru yet and you want to try it, uh, if you're a seller, here's the plans. Uh, there's a discount on this, zonguru.link, AMZ820. Um, this one right here. And uh, if you are enterprise, uh, an agency or, or uh, you know, an enterprise and you, you, you want to kind of get into the enterprise product, zonguru.link forward slash AMZ AEP uh, is, the, is the link here as well. So um, I'm happy to put that in the chat, um, but uh, hopefully that's helpful. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the questions. Awesome. Thank you for that, John. That was very in-depth and you know, we are, we're a partner of Zonguru, so we frequently use this tool as well. Uh, thank you for that. If, and, and just a reminder to anyone, if there are any questions, feel free to drop them in, in the Q&A section and we will uh, have a chance to answer those at the end. Uh, moving on to the next speaker, uh, we have Ramiro Velasco from Go Avance. He's going to be talking a little bit about advertising, merchandising, and promoting your products during Q4 and how to help drive more sales for uh, your brand. Ramiro, take it over. Thanks, Mike. And uh, thanks, John. I say sarcastically because I have to follow that up. That was great. Honestly, that was that was a really, really good time. So, awesome. Okay. Um, I want to start out by saying that uh, merchandising is crucial, right? Advertising, merchandising, you have to be keeping these things into account um, when we're talking about Q4. And recently, I've sort of gone through this uh, understanding, like transformation, where I looked at yearly sales for most sellers. And what you'll see is Q4 really like looks good. And then Q1 next year looks really bad. And I was like, hmm, what if we all agreed to keep it flat? What if we, what if we all agree to to smooth it out? Would it not be the same exact amount of sales? Um, yes, but that's impossible. So what we're going to run into is unless you're merchandising and unless you're fighting for those Q4 sales and those Q4 volumes, uh, you're going to fall flat, and then Q1 is still going to be terrible, right? There is no, we don't get to swim against this current. So we have to take advantage of the volume. We have to take advantage of people's, of, of consumer shopping behaviors. Ultimately, this is the time of the year that we all spend all of our money and then regret it for the next six months. Like, let's just be real about this. So what we need to do to do this is uh, to, to take advantage of this is just make sure that we're um, hitting the consumer right. Why uh, I, John mentioned something that I think uh, a lot of us are moving more and more towards, which is the humanization of Amazon. Um, of course, there is like like you said, look, you can have AI do a bunch of things for you. Try to think about your consumer. That is basically where Amazon is going right now, where algorithms are talking to algorithms. Let them do that. Let us figure out what our consumer needs. Right. So this is all a preface to say basically 
uh, your advertising, your merchandising, and anything else you're hearing on this call should be tools to execute the strategy that you have off Amazon. Advertising is a tool to execute your strategy, right? Um, so I'm not going to come in here and say, hey, like, just give 40% off. Like, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. What we need to do is understand the groundwork. We need to go in and understand our consumers. We have to understand our business model. What is our goal, right? Like, as a seller, what's your goal for this, for any uh, high volume period? Is it getting uh, product in people's uh, hands? Is it fighting for ranking? Is it, you know, is it revenue? Is it profitability? Which probably can't be profitability during Q4. Like per unit, it gets a little bit rougher, right? But what do you want to do? And I think that's the first question that anyone listening to this has to ask themselves. Because it's very easy to say, hey, I want 2x the sales and make 2x the money. And it's like, "Mm, okay, you're, you're kind of going in the wrong direction about this, right? Um, also consider your product. Like, is it a one-time purchase? Is it a consumable? Do you benefit from essentially lowering the barrier of entry to have them come back? Or is it something that you're really not going to sell again? Because this will matter. Because then if that's the case, you're really going for a ranking, right? Is your product seasonal? Like, I don't, how, however good your, uh, your discounts are, if you're selling boogie boards in December, we might have a little bit of a harder time in the Northern Hemisphere, right? So, understand where your product is before making any decisions and before t- uh, either you going into seller central or, or having your team go into seller central and just push random promotions these conversations need to be had right like what do we expect to get out of this where in the where, where in the journey of your uh, product are you you know where, what's the awareness of your product so far will you benefit massively from just having more reviews or if you're an established seller can you use this as an advertising uh, sort of uh, uh, vehicle, right? Um, and finally, I think something that we all need to consider is uh, your consumer ex- your consumer expectations. Twenty uh, percent, like you know, the minimum on for for most Amazon deals is twenty percent. You know what happens? Every consumer is coming onto Amazon already expecting that 20%. A lot of consumers are checking. Like if you're putting prices up a month before and then putting them down <laughs> during these seasons, don't because consumers are, are privy to that. Like they'll they'll catch on, right? And you kind of messed up your conversion rate for the month leading up. So what are you doing to stand out with consumers? Okay. And the last thing I will say before going into actual specifics is expect advertising to get more expensive. Um, that is just a given. Every single one of your competitors is bidding higher. So you will have to too, okay? So just deal with it and understand that what you can actually do is sometimes even save costs by offering a good enough deal that you're converting more and not having to go that hard on the advertising, okay? All these questions you have to ask yourself before you start taking on uh, going down the rabbit hole of uh, of merchandising. Now on Amazon, we're somewhat limited on what we can do. You know, if you got your general promotions, you've got your tiered promotions, like you know, buy one get the second one fifty percent off or whatever. You have your coupons, you have your lightning deals, you have your seasonal deals like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and the immediate question is, okay, how are we picking between these? Um, and I I don't want to just be steam steaming rolling through this, but this is sort of um. I think all of this needs to needs to be asked, right? Oh my God, I just got this intense panic that, okay, I thought I was muted for a second. <laughs> someone would have someone would have told me something. <laughs> um, so again, consider this, and we can consider various sort of examples. Like if you have a consumable product, listen, like if you're in the protein game, if you're in the supplements game, if you're in any space like this where your cost of customer acquisition is probably the cost of your product, Giving 50% off during these times and just using it as a new customer acquisition driver, fantastic. Fantastic. And if, when someone comes and suggests that to you and goes, hey, man, like we could just get a bunch of new consumers. We retain 33%. We'll make this money back. Uh, there's there's something to be said behind that, right? Like there's, there is some, some soundness to that logic. So don't uh, reject it quite immediately. I mean, if you go buy protein during uh, during Black Friday, you'll see everyone's 60% off. And it's lovely for us as consumers, right? But this is just the game that has to be played. It's literally prisoner dilemmas the whole way down. Um, 
if you're if you're looking if you have excess inventory try a lightning deal lightning deals in general you won't get great results out of in terms of uh almost anything unless you have a lot of uh, excess inventory in which what you're saying in which case what you're saying is um let's uh let's try to get through this and let's just try to use it to get ranking um oh sorry i just got a text i thought that was for me and the other thing I want to say that I think is super important is uh, in years past, it was very easy to say, look, we'll give this stuff away to get this ranking up, right? We'll, we're going to get this ranking up and then we'll just benefit through the year. Well, guess what? Everyone else is doing the same thing as well. <laughs> so we're all on the same boat of fighting over the same consumers. Um, so you have to be clever and be outsmarting and modify your copy, modify your text, give steeper discounts. Push harder on the advertising. During Q4, it is the sometimes when we're doing shopping, shoppers and shopping, and we can think about this as consumers. We'll do the same search like 10 times with different small keyword changes to try to um to find the right thing. You know, I'll type like red backpack and I'll go, oh, red pack backpack with bigger straps. And mm, that's not right. Long tail keywords really, and you you the the volume suggested um long tail keywords will perform really well during during christmas because when you're buying for someone you want to make sure you're getting the right thing right so with all that being said is there is it possible to form a unified strategy can i walk away from this uh going all right i know how to do this um yes yes but it has to come from what i was talking about at first okay where is your product? What is your business model? What's your consumer expecting? And form your business, your, your style around that. Black Friday, Cyber Monday, do tiered promotions, right? Because, hey, I'll, I'll buy something that I already generally buy. I'll buy it uh, at a bulk, okay? Oh, this is a one-time purchase. Maybe let's not go so low because I'm not going to have you as a consumer again in another year. Let's maybe do 20% minimum, but we understand that we're getting the volume. Um, and... You know, I don't, I, I don't want to go around in circles so much, so I'm going to call it pretty soon. But what I really want to get across is uh, it's not as easy as just put up some percentage and, and let it run. Because if you're doing that, your competitors are outperforming you hard. Um, and yeah, look, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to go further. <laughs> uh, that kind of fizzled out because I'm trying to not get into advertising too much. But um it's just really important to to be strategic, like John said, right? Be a human. We're not keyword stuffing and closing our eyes like we were five years ago. All right. Well, thank you for the uh, thoughts on that, Ramiro. Uh, next up, we have uh, Don Hennig from uh, Akrumi. He's going to be talking about financing your Q4 inventory to maximize your cash flow. And uh, again, just a reminder, please drop any questions in the Q&A. Don, take it away. All right. First off, the best part so far, Ramiro. I thought I was. I thought I was muted. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> oh, for a second, I was like, that "Oh, was great, man!" Even my heart stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Let me share my screen real quick, and I uh, will dig right in. I'm going to try to keep this to about ten minutes. Uh, we'll see how I do. We all know how that goes. All right. So here's what I'm going to be talking about today. Let's have a little fun. Uh, the number one thing you should do in Q4 to double your profits and improve your cash flow. Big statement, right? But I think you're going to see it. Uh, let's go. All right. So by the way, Accrue.me is number one. We're the number one ranked um, or rated capital provider on Seller Central. All five stars. Everybody that uses us loves us. It's a great, great opportunity. Love what we do there. Uh, this is a bit about me. I'm not going to go into it. The first bullet there is on LinkedIn. It's my full name, Donald Hennig. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'm one of those people that actually responds. So don't hesitate, send me anything. Uh, but I've built businesses in all different industries. Uh, you know, I've never been pigeonholed to one industry. I just find something, I get excited about it. I create a business and in most cases end up selling it. Uh, in this case, I was out for five years, retired. And I learned about Amazon sellers and I got excited. I literally went to bed that night and I remember dreaming of literally thousands of people in the, in the audience listening to me speak. And it was, I don't know what I was saying, but I was helping them grow their businesses. 
And that's what I do for my life. My whole life, I've just helped people improve, grow their businesses, have more fun, enjoy life. So that's what we're doing here. So let's keep going. All right. Uh, so here's a question. Let me start with this. If you Can you earn larger profits if you leave more money in your business or if you take money out of your business? It's rhetorical, all right? So you don't have to really answer because it's obvious if you leave more money in the business, then you can grow more, right? You can buy more inventory. You can create new products, you know, obvious. So here's an example. Let's say in September, you earned $20,000 of profit, okay? 20 grand. What action over the next couple of months, remember that's September. So we're going into Q4. What action can you do to earn more money in the following months? What about taking that $20,000 out and investing in the stock market or in, in CDs or whatever it might be, or leaving that money into your business, buying more good inventory that's going to turn over fast? I hope your answer is number two, building your business, growing your business fast when you have the opportunity. We're going to show you how to do that. But what happens if you have a monthly payment on a loan? And the monthly payment is 20,000. You earn 20, and now you have a monthly payment. Well, you know, right? You got to make the payment. That's the way you know it's supposed to be, right? So just think, think outside the box for a second. Have you ever thought about it? Does it make sense for your business? Yeah, you borrowed some money, you put it into the business, the business grew initially, and then every month afterwards, you had to take a chunk of money out of your business. Typically, from what I've seen, it's almost in your entire profits and send it to the lender. So every month you have less and less and less money to grow your business. Then you refinance, you get another chunk and you get a little spurt of growth. And then you have less, 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 less. Is that good for your business? Taking money out. It's not. You know, it's not. But it's the way it's always been done. Right. It's been done for like 2000 years. So, you know, when I was first married, my wife was making dinner and she was uh, literally uh, making a roast. And she cut off one side of the roast, cut off the other side and put it in the oven. I said, honey, why are you doing that? And she said, because it comes out great. And it did. It came out great. And she said that, you know, her mother taught her how to do that. So about two weeks later, I'm at my in-laws. I said to mom, you know, Joanne cuts off one side of the roast, cuts off the other side, puts it in the oven. It came out great. But she said, you taught her. Why do you do it that way? She goes, because it does come out great. And my mother taught me. So about a month after that, I see my, my uh, wife's grandmother straight off the boat from Italy, all right? Barely speaks a word of English, you know? And so I said to her, Grandma, Joanne and my mother-in-law, they both cut off one side of the, the, the uh, roast, cut off the other side of the roast before they put it in the oven. They said, you taught them and it comes out great. But why do you do that? She said, I had a small oven in broken English. You know, the idea is that just because it's the way it's always been done doesn't mean it's the right way to do it. Sometimes you have to think outside the box. And truthfully, with the crew me, when we started it, I sat down with my partner. And I said, I don't like what I see in this industry. He said, let's do it differently. So we came up with something that's never been done before. That's what we all try to do. You know, and everybody on this panel has done that. So here's a key concept I guarantee you almost nobody has ever thought of. Monthly payments equal lost profit. I'm going to give you this, the, the uh, formula. It's actually, this is exactly how it works. So think about your ROI per month, right? Let's say it's 10%. And let's say your monthly payment is $12,000. Multiply the two. So you're going to lose $1,200 in profit that month. Think about it. If you had $12,000 in your business, you're earning an ROI of 10%. You're going to earn $1,200 on that money. You're going to put it to work. The next month, you're not only going to lose $1,200, but you're making another payment. So now you're going to lose $2,400 a month in profit. That month and every month going forward. The next month, you're going to lose $3,600 a month in profit. That's These are facts. This is just the way it is. But people don't think about it because it's just the way it's always been done. We have to live with it. We don't always have to live with this stuff. So what are the types of loans for sellers? Is Term loans is revenue-based and success-based, which is what we created. So a term loan, think about the Amazon deal. It's not bad. You know, the payments are amortized. The one thing that's bad with it, I don't care about interest rate, it's pretty much meaningless, but the payments are amortized 
between six to 10 months. I haven't seen longer. I've heard 12 months. I haven't seen it. So on a $100,000 loan, your monthly payment somewhere between, call it $15,000, somewhere in that ballpark, 12 to 18, depending on the term. And think about it. The term is the most important thing in every loan. Imagine going and get a loan, a, a mortgage, and it's a $500,000 mortgage, 30 years, and your monthly payment's roughly $2,300. But now they change the term. They give you the best rate in the world. doesn't mean anything. They, get, they change the term to 10 months. So now your monthly payment goes up to 50,000 a month. You can't do it. It's gonna kill you. Same thing as a term, a short term kills your business and kills cash flow. So let's keep going. You have revenue based. Revenue based, by the way, are disappearing. You know, you saw the um, uh, announcement from Wayflyer last month. They're not doing them anymore. Uh, ClearCo, they're not doing them anymore. Others I'm sure are going down the same path. Why? because the sellers weren't making payments because the sellers were going out of business because it was a bad loan. It was not good for them. There was no cash flow. So what do they do with revenue base? They take a percentage of your monthly revenue. So on a $100,000 loan, your monthly payment is going to be somewhere around $20,000, maybe a little north of $20,000. All right. And then finally, success-based, which is what we created. And we don't require any monthly payments. We'll dig into that in a minute. Uh, you pay when it's right for your business, not when it's right for us. And this obviously is the best for cash flow. Think about Q4. Should you be taking money out of your business and sending it to a lender, or should you be reinvesting your, your money in Q4? Just think about it. You know, it, 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 it is, takes a little thinking outside the box, but you'll get there. All right. So success-based, what we do, you're not going to hit on every single point, but there's no interest. There's no fees. What do we get? we get a small temporary split of the share of the profit and you have no loss of equity. You keep 100% of the, of the, of the, of the uh, company, 100%. And I'm going to do something that I never see anybody in finance do. I'm going to actually explain to you exactly how we make money. Exactly. Though, you know, I never did this on a, on a podcast before or a webinar. So I think, you know, but I'm going to do it very quickly. At a high level with a success base, you keep 100% of the profits from your capital and you share the profits from our capital. And what's the profit split? What's the formula? All right. We give it to you in writing. We talk about it all the time, but I'm going to do it for you right here. I'm going to give you an example. So this just opens some eyes. All right. So think about a crew me, whatever percentage of the total capital we represent. And I'm going to give you an example. Whatever percentage of the total capital we represent cut it in half. And that's the profit percentage. I'll show it to you in a second. And we apply that profit percentage only to the first 5% ROI per month. Okay. So if you're earning 20% ROI, you're killing it. And we're just taking a little piece of that first 5%. You're earning 10%. We're just taking a little piece of that first 5%. All right. So let's look at an example. Here we go. Let's say you have $70,000 invested in your business. What do I mean? You have inventory at cost, plus your receivable, plus your cash in the bank, $70,000. I'm keeping the numbers nice and simple, make it easy on me. And Akrumi gives you $30,000. So you have now $100,000 total. What does Akrumi represent? $30,000, $100,000 total with 30% of the, of the capital in the business, right? Cut it in half, we get 15% of the profit not the whole profit. Remember, if you earned a 10% ROI, you are earning a 10% a $10,000 profit. A crewmate earns 15% in this, in this example of the first 5%. So in this example, a crewmate earned $750. There's no term and there's no monthly payments. So wait, what do I do with that 750? You could send it to us right on our, on our system. You just hit a button and it comes right over to us. Or you reinvest and you keep growing your business. So think about, again, I, um, we're in Q4, so think about it. This seller earns $10,000. Should he be taking money out of the business, even though it's just $750 in this example, and sending it to us? Probably smarter to take all the money, every penny he can, and grow the business while he has the opportunities or she has the opportunities. Uh, reinvest as much as you want, as much as you can. It's better for you and it's better for us. So what happens to that 750? 
a crewmate gave that seller $30,000. They used all the money to keep growing. They didn't pay us. The next month, they owe us $30,750. Just that simple. All right. So finishing up, just a summary of success base, no interest, no fees, no term, no monthly payments. That's the key to growth. If you, I don't care what your interest rate is. If you have high monthly payments, you can't grow. It's just bottom line. Sorry, that's it. Uh, no personal guarantee, no loss of ownership. Uh, summary, uh, can you grow faster by taking money out of your business or leaving it in? We know the answer, but apply it to your whole business. Uh, is taking money out of the business to pay a lender good for your business? You know, I know it's something you never thought of or most people never thought of, but no, it's not good for your business. Accrue me, we already touched on. And what we're doing is we're taking your knowledge and your hard work combined with our capital and our model. And that's a true win. And that's a true, um, you know, flight to success. Uh, finally, again, LinkedIn, if you reach out to me, I'm happy to communicate with anybody, any questions, anything at all. Uh, if you go to Accrue Me, click on Get a Funding Offer. And if you mention this webinar, we're going to do something that's unheard of in finance. We're giving you 30 days free. All right. So you, in that example, you take $30,000 and in 30 days, you come back and say, I don't like this for whatever reason. Give us our 30,000 back. That's it. There's no, not a penny more. There's never a, a prepayment penalty or anything like that. You don't have to give us notice. You could, six months from now, you don't like it or you, you've grown too much, which is what happens and you want to pay us off, you pay us off that day. Not a problem. There's no, no penalties. And that's it. I hope everything was, uh, I hope I was fast enough. And uh, everything's great. Thank you. Thank you, Don, for that. That's uh, definitely an interesting offer you guys have. And hopefully some sellers will take advantage of that uh, during this Q4. Uh, next up, we have uh, Sean Hart from per Post Purchase Pro, who's going to be talking about creating, well, great post-purchase oh. experiments experiences for uh amazon sellers so uh sean can you, can you hear us yes uh, am all I right coming through yep you are take Good. it away hey i apologize i'm like literally between two events so i'm at a sheridan hotel somewhere in jersey i don't know donnie probably knows where it's at so um thank you for having us over here and uh, i know everyone here except for romero why don't i know you yet I don't know. It seems awfully rude that no one introduced us. I know, isn't it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see if I can uh, share the right file here. Let's see. I'm a little bit handicapped, but you should be seeing a slide there. Do you do you have? Oh, it says sharing paused. Let's see here. Resume. Still nothing. I'm trying to share the actual window. Mm. Not sure. Uh, you should be able to. So I'm going to share. I'm, I'm single screening here, which is sort of a handicap for me. <laughs> Let's see. So you should see. Do you see my slide yet? It says my no, screen. but it says double click to enter full screen mode. I don't know if that helps. My uh, on my side, Mike, it says screen sharing is paused, but when i click resume it doesn't do anything i don't know i don't see anything on my side mm -hmm. let's see any options hosting panelists let's try hosting panelists. i can vouch for sean that he knows how to do this i know it <laughs> <laughs> well don my son's in the other room working on his amazon business and he heard your mafia offer so he's standing here there asking. you go i love it all right, let me just let me just switch from one screen to the other and we'll try this again. Let's see here. I gotta swap my keynote. This one is what I want. Try this again. This is so frustrating. Oh. Screen share. This one. There we there go. There you go. You're in. What do you have? We have your, your slide. <laughs> Sweet. All right. Yeah. So thanks again for having me in here. I got to get you handsome gentlemen off of this screen here. Uh, there we go. So 
the the big secret here that I want to talk about is that a huge percentage of your revenue should be coming from your existing customers, like it does for the most successful brands that you'll find all over the world. And where where does Amazon, if you think about this for a moment, where does Amazon.com itself make the majority of its sales? Is it coming from new customers or is it coming from old customers? I think you know the answer, right? Amazon puts the highest value possible on its customer base. That's why they protect their customer experience at all costs and proudly claim to be the most customer-centric business in the history of the world. And they really are. So the most <clears throat> valuable brands that you ever come in contact with are using this exact same concept that I'm sharing today. So let's talk about your existing customers, okay? Or your past customers, if you will. The first time, and I was like, built like Don back in these days, the first time that I discovered how truly valuable that my best, my past customers were was when I had started a medical supply company called the Heart Medical Supplies. You know, I had a little more hair back then, but what happened was we specialized in providing disposable medical supplies specifically for home care patients. And then we would just, instead of billing the patient, we would charge their insurance company. I think we're all familiar with this model. But what I qu quickly discovered was that our existing patients, when in need for some sort of wound care product or other supply, they would just call our office and ask to, us to obtain a prescription from their doctor and supply them with their needs. And then one day we decided to jump into this diabetic footwear business, right? And I thought that I would just be smart and then use cold email marketing tactics to boost my sales. Like think about PPC. This is sort of like cold email tactics. So what do you think about these results? We got our marketing message in front of 10,000 diabetics in our area, and I sold 14 pair of shoes. I don't think I would even qualify for Don's financing with those kind of numbers. But, you know, that's a horrible conversion rate. And the reason why is because they don't know me. They've never heard of heart medical supplies before. But in contrast, let's, let's compare this with what we did next. Next, I got a little bit smarter, right? So I sent a letter out to our existing customers who were already buying diabetic supplies from us. And I simply said, hey, look, you're entitled to a special uh, diabetic footwear every year, compliments of Medicare, and that we could easily send them a home kit, be fitted for the shoes, facilitate the entire process. And guess what? The uptake on my list was 80%. Same diabetics, different positioning. They already knew me. We sold 4,400 or so pair of diabetic shoes in one month with one mailing and did over $1.3 million in process, right? Each pair of shoes cost us $150. Medicare, our tax dollars at work, would pay us $450 per pair. So the profit we made from our existing customer list was amazing. And this was like the aha moment, if you will. Did you know <clears throat> that the most likely person on the planet to purchase from you again is your past customer? And did you know that the most likely product for your customer to purchase is the same product that they already purchased? So aren't you still selling the same product that you sold yesterday? Wouldn't you like to get your past customers to purchase again? Just ask them, okay? It's not magic. And according to Yelp, once you've attracted a potential new customer, they're more likely to buy from you again. Repeat customers, according to the Yelp poll, have 60 to 70% chance of making another purchase on a future visit, right? So new customer acquisition, I want you to understand, is the most expensive part of any business, and yes, even your Amazon business. So maybe you think, well, Sean, I'm not paying to capture new customers. Well, how much does Amazon charge you? 15%? How much are you spending on paid ads? 20, 40, 60% of your gross sales? Well, how much time are you spending optimizing your listings, your products, your images, all that to attract new customers. Doesn't time equal money? I think we all know that it does. We all pay for new customers, either in time, in money, or likely both. But once you attract a new customer, you forget about her and you move on looking to hunt down another and another and another. But you've already covered the cost of acquiring a customer. Why not take a play straight from Amazon and milk that customer for all that they are worth, all they want to spend? Do you think Amazon knows exactly what you and I, what our average order value is every time we visit the platform to shop? Of course they do, and that's exactly why they value us. Amazon is difficult, right, if you allow it. 
it's time to stop swimming, if you will, upstream into a tidal wave, looking every day for new customers and instead also add a component that sells your existing or past customers more product more often. So they buy more and they buy more often. So no matter what you think about email marketing, it works and it works well. And we're going to be jumping into email marketing in a big way here. But even if you don't think it resonates with you and your business right now, I promise you someday it will. Don't forget the principles I've designed and I'm laying out for you here will work in any business today, tomorrow, online or offline. So this stuff will be super valuable for you either immediately, like most sellers, or in the very near future. We're here together right now, though, so let's make this very productive. Regardless of your past experience or lack thereof, I'll soon show you a way to tap this resource, just like the big boys do, and quickly see more sales, higher ranking, better reviews, and of course, more profits. Repeat customers, increase your profits because they cost you nothing to acquire, and they purchase more often from you. On Amazon, though, repeat customers simply come back to Amazon and they end up buying from other sellers, but they should be buying from you. This fact is either unknown or it's ignored by 90% of sellers because Amazon makes it too easy for us to launch products and generate sales. But we already know that the largest companies in the world would never be successful while only transacting with their customers one time. Let me ask you, how much more profit would you make if 70% of your Amazon customers made an additional purchase without PPC cost. Your sales will go up by 70%, but your profit's even higher because you're not paying for the PPC. Don't you agree that your business would be way more profitable if this were the case? Just type yes or no in the chat box if you agree. I want to see if you guys are on board with me here. Look, remember that when an existing customer makes another purchase from you, this purchase is also at maximum profitability because you do not have to pay to acquire that customer through sponsored ads or any other paid traffic source. This is true whether you get one order per day or 10,000 orders per day. Whether you're the largest seller or a seller who's just starting his journey, the facts are the same. If 30% of your revenue goes to paid traffic, PPC or whatever, then each sale that you make to an existing customer is 30% more profitable, right? Look at this example. You sell a product for $50 and $15 was spent on paid ads. That's 30%. Your product cost and the FBA fees are another $20. What's your profit? $15, right? If you take 50, which is your gross sale, and you add your cost and your PPC together, it leaves you $15 profit or what we call contribution to overhead. But with no ads, you get more profit, right? If you can eliminate the need to pay for PPC to attract this customer, then you make 100% more profit. That's $30 or 2X instead of 15. Your profits literally double. Isn't this profound? If you guys are tracking with me here, just give me a yes in the chat box so I can check those out in a minute. From my experience, though, too many sellers, and maybe this is you, I hope not, you think that your product is different and it's unlikely your customer is going to want to purchase another hairbrush or another claw hammer, a wagon wheel, or a buggy whip. Well, if this is what you're thinking, then you're dead wrong, unfortunately, but it's not your fault. You're not trained to think about repeat orders, cross sales, customer referrals, gift purchases, replacement purchases, etc. How many times have you made a purchase on Amazon and then shared the exact product listing link with a friend or family member so they can purchase the same product. We all have, it happens all the time. But this is just one way that our customers create more purchases for us. What if your customers could be reminded of your product and all the good feelings and experience she had with it? Would she buy it again? Would she refer a friend, right? If given the opportunity, you bet she would. Here's a few examples. Let's say you're selling a weighted hula hoop for exercise. You could do it with a partner, maybe buy one for a spouse, a gym. You need one for home, for the office, for vacation, for a gift, for your boat done, a, a neck massager, for home, for office, for RV, for family, for a gift, a dog bowl, inside, outside, garage, travel. You get the idea. And these are not even consumable products. Now, you do agree, right, that if most of your customers came back and purchased more from you, that your sales would be higher and your business would be more profitable. Yes or no? Isn't it true that if your customers are the most likely people to buy from you again, then reaching out to them after their initial purchase from you would result in higher sales? True or false? I think the answer is obvious. 
The problem here is, is that most Amazon sellers don't realize that it is legal and possible for us to cultivate and capture our customers' real contact information. Why? So that we can follow up with them and make them more valuable through allowing them or compelling them to purchase more and to purchase more often. Now, Mike, I don't want to do this without your permission, but if I have 60 more seconds, then I have something very special to share with the folks here. I want to make an invitation. You do have 60 more seconds, so go ahead. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to share here is something that is super exclusive and very limited, and I literally just created it while Mr. Tilly was doing his presentation. So if you have a phone with you, now's a good time to pull it out before the timer ends. And so if you want $2,500 right now, I've prepared this for you. I'm going to give away $62,500 worth of information here. So grab your phone, and I'm going to show you my 16 secret systems that we use inside of our $30 million agency. I'm going to show you all of those systems. I'm going to show you how to get access to that. Everyone else is paying $2,500, but you're invited just because you're here with AMZ Advisors and Mike. I'm going to show you all 16 of our internal systems on an upcoming webinar that I've already scheduled for October 25th. And this is your private invitation, okay? So if you want to save $2,500 and you want me to unveil all of these insider secrets that we've used in this business, doing this as a service for other sellers, by the way, my agency is actually closed for new clients right now. That's why we're unveiling all this. We're at maximum capacity and can't get anyone else in. So if you want to join me, go here. I have only 25 free tickets available at $62,500. I have to check uh, Uncle Don there, check my math. But if you go to ppro.co forward slash ES forward slash ES, then I have 25 of those tickets available. Please don't post this in a Facebook group. I'm only doing that for you here for the AMZ advisors and the good folks here with me. My name is Sean Hart. Reach out to me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Twitter, whatever it is. And uh, hope to see you on the 25th, guys. Awesome. Thank you for that, Sean. Uh, you've you brought up some really great points throughout that presentation. It's a great offer as well. Hopefully, a lot of the uh, viewers will take advantage of that. Thank well, you again. I'll do, Don. <laughs> you I'll guys both there. did a great job, and I'm impressed with the math. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> anyways, right. moving on to the uh, last speaker, we have uh, Barack from Forescat with us. Uh, he's going to be talking about the things that probably cause us the most headaches. Uh, as Amazon sellers doing Q4, which would be making sure your product arrives on time uh, and customers are not upset. So Barack, please take it away. Uh, I'm not getting your audio though, Barack. Yeah, we're not hearing you. Uh, there we go. Can you hear me? There we go. Yep. Can you hear me? We got you. We got you. All right, perfect. I was just saying that we are open for new customers. So if you have new customers, you're welcome. So good to see you, all of you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, and, you know, everything you mentioned is incredible. If you guys have inventory, if your product is delivered on time, if your product is checked in, then you need extra money. You need to use chat GPT to probably optimize your listing. You can run advertising. You can, you know, you need to make sure that you guys are in the stock as well as not overstock because you will be paying a lot of money for the four quarters. So Amazon fulfillment centers has changed the way they're working right now. You know, they work as a fulfillment center instead of long-term uh, storage facility. Now, you know, with the accelerate, they, they announced this, a new system of Amazon. It's called Amazon Supply Chain, which they're bringing end user to the all the way to the third party sellers to suppliers, and they're they offer already Amazon Global Logistics, and then they, now they're offering the AWD. In my opinion, everything looks great. However, when it in the theory, when it comes to the real practice, they have so many delays. They have you know uh, the pricing issues. They have the the last mile delivery issues. You know, kind of fulfillments. Something interesting, I don't know if you guys recently purchased anything, but I ordered a couple of things. I just adopted a dog actually, and I ordered lots of things from Amazon. And most of the products, all that I'm a Prime member, all the products looks like gonna be delivered to me this Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So they're struggling actually to fulfill the orders in my opinion, not from the seller side, but from the perspective, you know, I don't receive the products on time. It means that, they're you know low, they're short in this stuff they're short in the 
outbound order speed, they're short in the lost mile delivery. So this is not only Amazon's problem, but the industry problem. The reason is there are a lot of cancellation. I'm sure a lot of you heard about, you know, the international shipping prices went down, but we have more challenges because the shipping lines, they're losing a lot of money. That's why they do random scheduled cancellations in order to, you know, maximize their capacity. So this is the one thing. The second thing is Amazon FBA checking times. So it's not only your supply chain delays and there, it's not only your manufacturers, they're facing cash flow problem. Don mentioned that, you know, most of the brands, most of the, the companies, they're having cash flow issues. It's hard to find the, the smart money to, you know, fund your business. But same thing with the uh, manufacturers all, all over the place, especially in China. If you're a private label seller, most probably you'll be ordering products from China. So you need to be very careful about what you're ordering, what quantity you're ordering. It's great to understand the, your BSR. It's great to understand your sales history, but more importantly, to track your international shipments as well as the lost mile delivery. But more importantly, a lot of sellers, they avoid the checking times with Amazon. So now in the past, you could deliver everything easily to one fulfillment center. Now Amazon makes that more complicated. They're giving you multiple locations to ship the product because eventually whenever you have Whenever you create a shipping plan, Amazon wants to reduce their domestic fulfillment transfer fee. That's why, according to the sales data, according to the sales map, they ask you to ship the product to a different part of the United States. So this is causing a lot of companies to have increased lost mile deliveries, especially we see we see a lot of delays in the West Coast. So we see that Amazon is investing in more on the East Coast, Florida, North Carolina, New Jersey area, even the inland. And this is causing companies for longer, longer transit times, more expensive lost mile deliveries, and more importantly, longer checking times. And these are causing companies with the additional increased FBA fees. I don't know if the sellers are aware of that or not, but the, law, the fourth quarter uh, FBA fees per square feet it is $2.44 versus regular times around 44 cents. So it means that for pallet size, if you, if you have picture, if you picture a pallet full of product, let's say you can fit 30, 30 cartons, regular season, Amazon charges per pallet storage is 35 to $40. In the last quarter, they're charging $180. If you don't make your math, if you have overstock, you definitely need to go to your inventory management. You need to check how much is Amazon is charging you for the maybe the dead inventory, the old stock. You need to make sure that you get rid of it. Either you liquidate it, either you liquidate that, or you take it back to a fulfillment center and maybe you can start offering FBM, which I think this last quarter, I believe that the FBM uh, will be even making more sense for a lot of brands. If you have like FBA offer, you should definitely turn on the FBM. The reason is, even if you have a ready inventory in a 3PL in the US or you have inventory in AWD, the transit times to check into Amazon is going to be very long because they are going to prioritize to ship out people's order. It means that if you have two, three pallets of products sitting outside of the fulfillment center, Amazon is not going to prioritize that product to check in. We see these delays in the prime day sales that regular prime day, regular order would be delivered to a seller within you know 24 to 48 hours now i see that it's 72 hours and 96 hours so this is something very important people to understand and more importantly to check the inventory age this is something can be a huge cost lots of sellers you know they didn't care about the profitability the last couple of years but now this is the most important year of the profitability because the money is very expensive Amazon is paying back really late and, you know, they keep the reserve in order to make sure that, you know, the quality is good. You keep all your promises. So we see that sellers, a lot of, a lot of businesses struggling now with the cash flow. So that's going to be my, actually, uh, the last advice to keep the FPM order, um, keeping the FPM order offer uh, active in your listing. And making sure that you know you can fulfill these orders so you can collect the money faster because I definitely will see that uh, the shipment checking in time is going to be way longer. Right now, we see average 60 to 65 days. Whenever we deliver a full container to one or two fulfillment centers, Amazon splits that shipment to more than 40 warehouses across the nation. 
And this is causing a lot of time. A lot of companies, they think that their order has been delivered successfully. Let's say you are selling 1,000 of microphones, but only you see like 100 products active in your listing. There are 900 products are still in the transit. So FC transfer, which is not eligible to sell. So you need to be careful about it. And if you guys, uh, we this is something another we're talking about now, the HTS codes audit. We are offering free HTS code audit. If you're looking to minimize some cost, maybe your product is um, eligible to use different types of HTS codes, you can contact us and we can help you to see if we can find a better and cheaper HTS code for the import process. That's it, Mike. Awesome. Thank you for that, Barack. I appreciate all the, the information that you just gave to the listeners. Uh, that actually brings us to the end of the show. Uh, it doesn't look like we've got any questions submitted, but we will also be sending this recording out uh, to everyone tomorrow for, for anyone to, that wants to catch up on anything that we talked about today. Um, just before we go, uh, let's run through it quickly. Anybody uh, want to give any last words? We'll start with you, John, and run back through the order. Yeah, I think just good luck out there. You know, this is, uh, um, I, I think it feels a little bit better this year because everyone's not comparing year over year as much as they were before with with obviously coming out of the pandemic and some of the spikes. So it feels a little bit more controllable. Uh, I think Amazon's a little bit more on top of their game. So, um, you know, just do, do, do the right things right and, and good luck. Awesome. Romero, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I mean, I think anyone that's listening to this and you know other Amazon sellers, like there was so much knowledge dropped here that um you really want to get this to other people. Like this isn't a promotion thing. I don't, you know, just there is there was a lot of knowledge uh, dropped today, which is really nice uh, to listen to everyone. So awesome. thanks everyone. Don, anything to add? Uh, you know, I think it was great too. I agree with Ramiro and uh, I'm just going to give one little tidbit. Kick ass and Q4, man. Have fun, everybody. <laughs> awesome. I love that. Sean, anything from your end? Yeah. So, you know, I, I travel literally around the world sharing uh, these types of golden nuggets with sellers. And the only thing that I've noticed that makes a difference is not meditating on it, but taking action on it. So literally the best time to get started on this stuff was yesterday. The second best time to get started is today. So don't sit on it. If you want change, you have to take action. It's so nice to see familiar faces here. Thanks for the invite again. Well, thank you for coming, Sean. And finally, Brock, any last words from you? Yes. Um, just make sure that you guys are understanding your numbers, your landing costs and profit. See, there will be a lot of additional costs probably. It's coming from the FBA, you know, the fulfillment fees, the storage fees. You really need to understand your numbers better. And then you can adjust your PPC budget, the coupons, you know, deactivate, activate. Uh, make sure that you understand your numbers at the end of the day. It doesn't matter how much you guys make in the sales. It matters like how much profit you have for your business. So you can reorder. And Chinese New Year is coming. Uh, you know, it's around the corner right after the Christmas. So you need to plan your inventory well. Um, that's it. That's another good thing to think about of what's coming around the corner in the new year. Uh, that will end the Q4 Road to Success webinar. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Like I said, we'll be sharing this recording so you can check it back later. And uh, if anything comes up, please feel free to reach out to any of us here. A lot of us shared our contact information, and we're all glad to help in any way we can. So thank you very much, everybody. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Mike, Wonderful day. It.